Hi everyone, it's Michelle Margie with Medina Domestic Art Studio and our video today is how to color the turtle. This is the first in the 12 part series of the Animals Gone Zen block, which is a block of the month sponsored by Gone Quilty. So today when I show you how to color, we're going to do sections, not the entire turtle. I think most of this is self-explanatory in your notes. Um, you can go to the website and download them at www.medinadomarts.com. Uh, look under the More tab at the top. Click on the instructions that is underneath A-G-Z-B-O-M. These are instructions that are specifically for the Animals Gone Zen blocks. And uh, in your packet, if you download it, you'll end up getting a blank copy of the turtle, just like you see here, but on paper. And I would highly recommend that you take this paper copy and do like what I've done, which is come in and color various different sections so I have a general idea ahead of time as to what colors go where. And I do this simply because you can easily make a mistake or get confused um, while you're coloring the fabric copy. And let's face it, it's a lot harder to make corrections on this as opposed to this. So you can see I have lots of notes. This was actually what I used to help me uh, create the diagrams in your packet. And by the way, uh, most of y'all will notice that my diagrams are handwritten. Um, I used to do PowerPoint and Word and Excel when I was in the corporate world. That has been 10 years ago. I'm starting to forget all my knowledge about those products. So I found it just easier and less frustrating just to handwrite it. But by the time I uh, release the other block instructions, I will be a little bit more professional in what I post to y'all and so that it's not all handwritten. But in the meantime, if you, when you see my diagrams, um, they are actually hopefully neat and legible better than this because today I was just scribbling as I put this together. Okay, so I'm gonna put this out kind of in front of me and let's talk about general ideas as to the best way to go about coloring any of these blocks. With any of them, what you really should do is start in the middle. Um, which only makes sense because as you, if you were to start, say, at the head, or if you were to start, say, in the outside and work your way in, your hands are going to rub up against the fabric as you color it, and your oil, um, the, your natural oils from your hands can actually smear the color. Maybe not so much with the fabric markers, but I can see sometimes with gel pens, you might be able to smear them, particularly if they're freshly uh, colored and still wet. Um, speaking of which, these take mm, sometimes as long as 30 minutes to dry. So it's another reason why to start in the middle and work your way out, as opposed to working um, from top to bottom, right to left. Uh, so again, starting with the center is the easiest way to go. I have all of the colors that I have recommended here. Um, let's talk about them first. Um, even though some of the videos that I've done earlier, the introduction videos have discussed this, I wanna go into more detail. Um, these are the Fabrico pins that I uh, specified uh, in the instructions. Um, I will admit that I had to replace a couple that I had used originally. When I first did the turtle, it was two years ago, and some of the colors have been discontinued. So I have tried to get the colors as close to the original as possible, but I will admit that some of these colors are going to be slightly different in color, but I think you'll be still happy with the way the colors look. Uh, jelly roll pins. I do have four. I have two Stardust pins, as well as two metallics. Um, in my notes, I do note that you can substitute different jelly roll pins for another if you are wanting more bling. And last but not least, there is the Kaiser Craft um, pastels and the Kaiser Craft glitter pins. Um, some of you may have bought these in two individual packages or you can buy it in a full kit like this. 
The pin sets are the same, so there's no difference between the two of them. They just come in smaller boxes. One would be a box of the pastels, the other the box of the glitter pins. Um, I'm going to be using these today. Uh, at first, I didn't think I would bring them into the picture, but so many of you like bling that I thought, well, what the heck, why not go ahead and get started with bling right away? Last but not least, um, I am going to point out again, as I did in the first video, that you can use Sukunika ink. Let's see if we can get this so you can see it up close. This is a Celadon, and I'm actually going to use it just as a part of the demo today to show that you can use Sukunika ink mixed with fabric medium and get the same result as a fabric marker. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first area that we're going to color is the center. And these are used, you can use either the two Jelly Roll uh, metallic pins or, and I think this is what I'm going to do today, is you can use the two uh, glitter pins. One is orange and the other one is yellow. By the way, if you have any confusion over which pins is associated with the color codes on your charts, please do not hesitate to text, email, or call me, and I'll make sure that you understand which one is which. Okay, so very easy. I think this is the, the gonna be the, the best video of, of all because it is actually so simple that it's just a question of coloring. So as I indicated, I'm going to start out here in the middle and make sure that you guys can see this. I'll try to keep my hand out of the way. And even with pins, I like to start in the middle of an area and work my way towards the stitch line. And I'm going to color right up to that stitch line, rubbing the pin head all along the stitching so that it gets colored completely. Now, I'm not gonna do these entire colors. Once I get you guys started, I think you'll be very capable of finishing this on your own, but I'm going to go through each one of these various different sections so that you can see what the colors look like and um, how to actually color. And so I come along, and if this were me, I would probably just go ahead and do all of the orange sections first, and then I would come along with the gold and do the little outside edges. Very easy, very, very easy. It's, I think why I chose this one to start with is because I think it's more or less instant gratification. Um, it, it's not so intimidating as say the others will be as we get into the pencils and uh, I, very, very nice to work with. Okay, so, um, let us now go up to, because I want to use just a little bit of everything, and I also want to try to show some techniques. Um, let's go up to this section right here. And there I'm going to use the uh, Jelly Roll Marine. By the way, I want to try to see if I can point out, when you look for the numbers, if you look right here, on your pin, there is a number, 738. That is the number that corresponds with the code that I given to this pin um, when you go to color with it. So I'm just gonna start coloring once again. I start in the middle. Ooh, look at all that bling. So pretty. And I work towards the outer edge and again, roll the pin along the uh, edge of the stitching so that I can get it colored. I'll do a couple of more. Very easy. Oops, I know I didn't start in the middle like I should have. Sometimes I do that, and sometimes you will too. It's probably no big deal. It's just, again, it'll save you some heartache if you start in the middle and work your way out just to be on the safe side. Okay, now that was the Jelly Roll pin. Now I'm going to pick up the Sukuniko Pine, which is the color that goes on the outside around the scales of the, of the turtle. And because this area is so small, I prefer to use the smaller tip. Um, you can try to squeeze, push these in to the bottom. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And just come along 
again, starting in the middle and with small light strokes, just come in and, and color. And you'll, you'll notice how easy this is to get right up along the edge of the seam line. It's not that big a deal at all. Now, don't hold these down against the fabric. It will bleed if you hold it there for any length of time. So always use short strokes to color with Fabrico pins. All right, that is that section. And now what I wanna do is, let's see here, where do we wanna go next? Um, let us look at the, oh, let's look at the Celadon. Um, Celadon is, is you're gonna be using this color quite a bit on the areas on the outside of the, well, uh, kind of the, the larger areas in the turtle's uh, arm, flipper arm. I don't know, you're, uh, I named it arm, maybe it is his arm, maybe it's not, but that's what I'm calling it. And um, so these larger areas, I think the thing that you have to be most careful is, is not to let these things streak. So I'm just gonna start kind of back and forth, overlapping, again, starting in the center, working to both sides, come along the stitch line, come up here now again if I were doing this properly I would have covered the entire area first but I'm trying to uh, cover as many various different tips um, for y'all as you go to color these and notice short strokes along the edge um, I don't want any bleeding and I go back over some of the areas that do kind of leave brush marks so I can get a nice uniform coverage of that area. And then I would move, since I'm coloring it this way, I would move from top to bottom, again, so that my hand's not rubbing up all against the ink uh, as I'm coloring it. Fabrica will take a bit to dry, um, sometimes again up to as much as a half an hour, so you wanna make sure that it dries completely. Okay, I, I wanna focus now on the turtle's head. And it's because there's going to be what I call overlays or overlaps with some of these colors um, to get kind of the same effect that the quilt has. And so I'm going to pick up, mm, I'm gonna go ahead with the um, Kaiser Craft Green and I'm gonna come in here to the center section right here. Now these have very, very, very fine tips. So you may find initially that coloring with them um, takes a little bit more effort because the pin head is so small. But again, I'm gonna just start here in the middle and I'm gonna start coloring. And you see it kind of takes a little bit more because the pin head is so small. These are all originally designed, these Kaiser Crafts, they were originally designed for scrapbooking. Um, it just so happens that the ink is permanent. Uh, really nice ink, by the way. Um, these are from Australia, and uh, I, I really, 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 really like them. Um, the color goes on well. Um, you do have to kind of overlap your strokes quite a bit to make sure there's no streaking. But what I want to show you now is, I when I first did this, and again, this was a color that I had to replace with a discontinued Fabrico color, and I thought this was a bit bright. So what I'm going to do now is, while that's still wet, I'm going to come along with Peapod, and I'm just kind of, kind of lightly go over it. And what that's going to give me is a little bit lighter color, because you've got that, um, you've got the Jelly Roll. Uh, Kaiser Craft pen underneath and this is called overlaying your color blending is another word for it and when it's all said and done you can see that it's it's probably a little bit lighter than what the uh, normal jelly roll uh, excuse me the normal Fabrico pen is because now I'm going to come up here and Peapod does color right up above here and you'll see that it's darker so it's a way to get shading 
I do, I'm, have made reference to several points like this. We're gonna go down to the flipper here in a minute. I'm gonna show you another spot where you're going to blend like that. So what's really, really nice is overlaying with a gel pen, you can then color over with a fabric marker and you can actually create a different look. Okay, and I'm gonna go um, right down again. I'm gonna repeat this same thing for the flipper down here. Um, the flipper, this was another color. I could not find, let's see, I want cerulean blue, which is this one right here. I couldn't find the original dark that I had on this outer part of the flipper. And I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna start coloring this. Um, and I felt like the cerulean blue, as gorgeous as it is, it was a bit too dark for what I was trying to, uh, excuse me, a bit too blue, too, too light. So I came along and I'm coloring it, just as you see right here. And again, get it all the way into the stitch line. I hope everybody can see this. I'm trying to stay, keep my finger out of the way. Um, and I can't necessarily watch and color at the same time. So if, uh, this, if this may be something that you may want to speak to me about, I'll try to figure out another way to color this so that you can see what I'm trying to do here. And I'll try to speak up too, because I'll start paying attention to my coloring and I'll forget to talk or I'll forget to explain myself and what I'm doing. Okay, so that's done. And he's now covered with cerulean blue. But what I want to do to darken him up a bit is I'm going to pull out that number 738 Jelly Roll Stardust pin. Let's see if I can get this in just a little bit more, because I want you to see how this works as I do this. Okay, you can see maybe him a little bit better now. Okay, I'm gonna come just straight over the cerulean blue and it's gonna darken him up. Ooh, but it also puts a little sparkle on his flipper too. Um, I just really think um, the cerulean blue, because basically you're using the cerulean blue in each one of these ovals up here. That's a lot of the same color and I wanted to give a little bit more of a variation to the color. And so I came along and overlaid the jelly roll on top of the cerulean blue, making sure again, you get it all the way to the edges. Um, it creates basically a different color um, all the way around. Um, don't worry about that boo-boo. That'll cover up with the next pen that we use on top of it. And again, normally I would have started in the center, worked my way out but for the sake of the video, I'm actually um, just showing the different places where color can be used in a different in a different way. Okay, now, um, ah, the next thing I wanna show you is if for some reason, and this may happen with the turtle because I only have enough uh, Celadon pins to provide the full kits or people who bought kits with color. Those of you who may have only purchased the block and bling setup may say, oh, I want that cerulean uh, green pen that looks really good on the turtle. Well, that's okay, you can do that. I'm going to take the celadon, and I'm put this in the video so that you can see it, and I'm gonna put a little bit of fabric medium here, and then Actually, I didn't bring one of those nose droppers out, so I'm gonna do this a bit carefully and just splash some of that celadon right on top of the fabric medium. Then I'm gonna come along with my brush and I'm gonna mix it really well. Mix all of that fabric medium with the celadon so that it gets, that the celadon, you're not using pure ink, because I think, as I mentioned in the introductory uh, video, if you use Sukuniko Ink Direct, which many fabric artists do, um, I, I notice that beginners tend to use too much of it. It will run, you'll get upset because it bleeds, and, and and that's not good, and that's not what we want here on this first go-around. Now, down the road, as we get 
more experienced, um, we may venture forth into using the um, Sukuniko Ink Direct. But for the time being, if, if we are gonna use it at all, we're gonna use it as a mix of fabric medium. So I'm just gonna go up here and let's see if I can bring this out just a bit. Actually, no, I'll, I'll stick down here so that you can see this. Um, I'm just gonna come down here and start brushing this on. And here in a minute, I will zoom back out so that you can see it's basically the same color as the Fabrico marker that I used. Um, really, really like this stuff, I have to admit. Um, if, if you're comfortable, and this is gonna happen, you're gonna, there's gonna be two camps as we do these classes. There are gonna be those who absolutely love fabric markers and pencils, and then there will be those of you who absolutely love paints. And as a good friend of mine says, that's what makes the world go round, is that we all have different likes and dislikes. Um, I'm partial to both, um, but then I'm partial to coloring on fabric, period, so that's a good thing. And notice it's just really super easy. I'm being very careful, by the way, not to put this down directly along the stitch line first because I, I was a little worried that I, you know, I always mix this stuff up on the fly. And if you don't get the percentage of fabric medium to ink correctly, you can, you can start having bleeding. So I just work it towards the stitch line, starting from the center and work towards the stitch line. And once I'm convinced that it's not going to bleed, which it isn't, this is this was a good blend. I got it right the first time, yay. Um, so I'll just finish coloring this section and then I'll zoom out and then you'll see that it's basically the same color as the sol Solidon that's up above. Yes, I'm going silent here for just a minute as I round that corner near his elbow. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out here and you will see let me bring this down here just a bit that the color here is basically the same color here so you know it's something to think about I know that there's several of you who are basically going to be coloring this on your own so this is one consideration that you may have for um, using color to color your turtle um, I think that's really just about it. Given that this is the first video, you may come back to me and say, oh, Michelle, no, 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 I expected you to color the entire thing and show me everything. That is a consideration. Just please know that these videos sometimes take forever and a day to load up. But if you do want me to color various different sections so that you can see what the color looks like, I would be happy to. Um, of course, that's what we will be doing in class, but I'm mainly speaking to those of you who are out of town and who are getting these kits and you wanna try to figure out which color is which and for whatever reason, the color charts don't quite do it for you. Just let me know and I'll come in and um, well, let's just do this for as an example. Say for instance, this is the, the purple and right up here, and I'm gonna pull out my handwritten chart. This is color number 724. It goes on these flowers right here and across here. So I would come down and say, okay, look, you're gonna color all of these. This color right here, I'm kind of sloppy, but that just shows you where the color goes. You know, if this is the kind of thing that you need me to do, I would be happy to, um, you know, again, back to the, to the blue, for instance, it goes, uh, this is 738. It goes down here in these petals. I'm just putting color there. Um, I will be using this in class on Friday. Um, I just want to get some color down so everybody can see it. Same thing with the gold. Okay. Guess what? That's where the gold goes. And we go here, 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 here. Um, so if you need me to do that, um, just let me know and I will try to provide a video along those lines. In the meantime, any questions, 303-818-3625, text, call, email is medinadomarts, D-O-M-A-R-T-S, at AOL.com. 
Hope this video helps and good luck with coloring the turtle. Thank you.